Matt signed a newspaper, man. What's your name again? Matt. Matt. I don't know how I forgot it. He lives in the Pledge of Allegiance. Then I'm going to have our chief police to stand prayer for him. God, we thank you for this beautiful day, and we thank you for this wonderful city that we get to live in and work in, and we just ask that you would be with each and every one of us, grant us wisdom, and help us to make the proper decisions for the city and its citizens. We ask that you be with us, and bless and grace us, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, call this meeting of the Port St. Joe City Commission to order. First on the list, consent agenda. We have two, we're doing both at the same time. We have a regular commission meeting on 4-18-17, and we have a special commission meeting on 4-25. Anyone give me a motion to approve? Yep, okay. We got a motion from Commissioner Ashbrook. Have a second. Have a second. Second by Commissioner Lowry. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries 4-0. Uh, before we go any farther, uh, Commissioner Thursday will be here. He's been tied up, but he's, he's, he's on his way. Uh, Port St. Joe redevelopment update. Good evening. Good evening. Um, we have a lot going on. I guess you guys know that. Um, uh, in George Corps Park, we've... Uh, We've started with some construction projects. We've gotten contracts to rehab the Eglin House, do some work in Sleeping Beauty. We're adding some uh, some park and containment down there to keep cars out of the park. Um, trying to move forward with that entire project. Are there any questions on George Corps Park? Looks good. We're also receiving bids on the 4th Street Gateway Project, which is the archway going over 4th Street right there with the uh, Billy Joe Rich decks located in the Daly's Dock, uh, Daly's Dock and Dive. It's going to be a, a nice, I think, entrance uh, gateway for City of St. Joe. The bids come in this coming Friday on that project. What time are those open, Bill? Three o'clock. Three. I was ready for that one. <laughs> um, we're also doing some things on Reed Avenue we talked about tonight with uh, trying to dress up the planter beds on Reed Avenue with some brick pavers. Especially, I think, on 3rd Street and Reed, we're going to add some, some pavers there in the planter beds to help dress that up a little bit. Uh, is there any questions on that? Okay. Is there any questions on anything we're doing? Good job. Keep um, doing it. Have a good evening. All right. Thank you, Bill. All right. This is the city attorney. Yes, Mr. Yes, Mayor, I have a couple things on the agenda tonight. The first one being Resolution 21706, dealing with road utilization and construction permitting. Uh, resolution number 21706, the resolution of the City Commission of the City of Fort St. Joe adopting a schedule of fees, charges, and expenses related to road utilization construction permits provided by the City of Fort St. Joe, providing for repeal of any resolution of conflict. Motion to adopt that. I'll move. Got a motion by Com Commissioner Bazette. Second. Second. Second by Commissioner Ashbrook. Any further discussion? I'd just like to say I, I think the permit application fee is reasonable. Penalties are reasonable. I think it's uh, it, it's a good good thing we're doing. How are we gonna get the message out? Yeah, um, so we're gonna try to contact all the uh, the major utilities we deal with on a regular basis, Mayor, so we will get something out with a copy of this resolution to you. And if you would, put it, put it on a website or somewhere on there that you know, highlighted what have you. But, but yeah, you know you know the ones that we that, that normally do work in the city, uh, they need to definitely need to know. All in favor? Skip that one and come back to it. Skip it. Huh? And that's all I had. So all right. Commissioner Thursday will get back to it. We'll come back to that out if that's okay with everybody. Mm -hmm. That's all I have. All right.
Jim? Yes, sir. The first item I have under old business is the Commerce Park lot Utilities. Uh, we've been trying to get it, all the utilities moved, gas, water, and sewer, so we could close on Friday. Unfortunately, we found something else today. We found a large steel line that looks to be 36 inches in diameter. So we've been calling around uh, some of the former companies that were in the area trying to figure out exactly what we got. It looks to be a raw water line, apparently either coming from Basin, uh, Premier, or could be coming from uh, possibly the bleach plant going for raw water uh, for cooling from the old bill site. So mm. we're going to dig down up tomorrow to see what we got. But it, it doesn't look good for Friday closing. Just we'll skip Avenue D and come back to it. Yes, sir. Let's skip that when Commissioner Thursby gets here. Okay, on the new business, the first item I have is the Dixie Youth Baseball League. Uh, Mr. Mark Coston wanted to talk to you tonight about it. Hi. Mark, um, just a couple of things. Uh, number one, and I know the like John Grantland's aware, but we're hosting districts this year starting June 10th and um, just make sure that we're all aware all on the same page that you know we have the adequate support you know to help out with the fields and all for those dates that's starting on a Saturday um, excuse me I said go ahead and I'll ask you you got your notes there okay well I mean that as far as districts that's really all I have to say is okay. just making sure we're all aware how, how many ages I was going to say about well you know it'll be um, double A triple A ozone and it'll be I'm assuming Appalach we wall Bluntstown so you know that we have three, uh, three teams out of each place teams. 12, 12 yes. total yeah I think so and, and, it it's and it could potentially it's the the date scheduled are the 10th through the 14th I mean, they usually, from past experience, don't last that long, but it's double elimination. So, you know, my concerns, as always, is going to be parking, uh, mm -hmm. bathroom facilities. Mm -hmm. You know, basically, we have what two bathrooms and then one across. Isn't there a is there a bathroom across the street by the where the yeah. girls play? Right. Mm -hmm. like, we, we, I, I'd like to see us maybe uh, city uh, rent two. Uh, more or less put down by a triple A field which is inside that fence behind the uh, stack house uh, and then I think we got everybody covered you know what, what I'm talking about or you, you think the bathroom there the concession stand sufficient we I think we might need maybe two more right there I mean well, you gonna, that's going to bring a lot of people in it will at and, one and time and one of the reasons why we it wasn't even our year to host it, but me as the president of the league, when I met with Brian Cox, uh, I think Appalach passed on the opportunity. But you know, our league can stand to make five to seven thousand dollars based on you know past experience if we do it right. Um, we've had some parents really step up in the concession stand. They're doing a good job. You know, we do a lot of us parents, coaches, do a lot of sweat equity. You know Brad yeah. helps a lot. Brad's on the board. Um, you know, we, we spend a lot of hours behind the scenes doing this, and we just want to make sure we do it right. So, um, I mean, I wouldn't have a, have a problem with us putting four. I know I in the past, four, four would be plenty, I, I would say. Um, you know, if you had some, like you're saying, by the AAA field, which I still call it the major league yeah, field major back league. from however right. long ago. But, um, you know, you have one by Ozone, which is old Pony League field. Right. Then we have the one at the you know, concession stands. Well, that services each field, basically. Exactly. Some down at the AAA. Yes. AAA. I think that would be a, a huge help. Because it, it gets congested, and I really feel for the guys that run the concession stand because they're going to be slammed. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, they uh, they do a great job. Mark, I, I got with Jim today, and, and uh, we rode down there to look at parking uh, situation. I talked to the chief tonight uh, about it. We, we 
got some really good ideas about, I, I think we can handle it. We'll probably park them behind the softball field, go to softball in that 16th Street, the old 16th mm -hmm. Street golf course. Mm -hmm. There's, as long as we don't get much rain, through, it can get kind <laughs> right. of Right, right. <laughs> so, so I, if that, I mean, this brings a lot of money in the town. It, it does, it does. And, um, you know, I've had the opportunity to play in a lot of ballparks in our area in the last couple of years. Like, for example, last year, I took my team and went and played teams in Mariana, Grand Ridge, um, Bluntstown. We played historically Weewall in the past. And, um, you know, the one thing I will say is that our parks are way behind everybody else's. They just are. I mean, go to Weewall. Weewall blows our way. Grand Ridge blows ours away. Bluntstown, Mariana. Uh, Mariana, I can see they're bigger, but, you know, Grand Ridge even blows ours away. Um, you know, I would just, you know, our kids don't have a ton. You know, one of the reasons why I volunteer my time isn't just for my own child, it's for these other kids, too as do a lot of other parents and you know I would just love to see if we could maybe pay more attention to our local baseball leagues and maybe see if we can spruce it up a little bit. I think um, there's a move afloat I'm yeah. heard on, on the grapevine to uh, hopefully get some of that uh, is it a half penny. cent or a full cent? Whole cent. Whole cent. Whole cent. Huh? Penny. That's a whole penny earmarked for nothing but Sport complex, and it'd be street. cheaper to rent, renovate what we have. Absolutely, yeah. than, than to go out, yeah. out and of town. My thoughts also on you know what we improve Tenth Street to make it look nice, or to go way out John in the country. Our kids that walk the ballpark here on Tenth, they can't walk way out there. They can't ride their bicycle no, way out no. there, and, and they'll miss out. You look at this. We, so I, I, I agree wholeheartedly. I mean, I think that we can. You we know, got a workshop coming. With your camp. Yeah. And, and, you know, too, you know, us as us parents that put the, the sweat equity in, too, you know, we're, we're willing to help however. Um, you know, just to give you an example, if we have to play a night game on the old Little League field, which is double A, which is where I'm coaching now, I'd be scared to death. Like, I've had to practice at night at the beginning of the season. You can't see. You know, pop fly, mm -hmm. I mean, the lighting's not that great. I do thank y'all for getting the grass replanted, you know, in the double A field. Um, you know, John Grantland's been great. Jimmy Rogers has been great. You know, I've, when I've asked for help, I've gotten it. And I'm not here, you, you guys have been great. I would just like to see us maybe try and take it a step further, especially just, you know, seeing what I saw last year. I really wasn't as aware until I did a lot of the traveling last year. And, you know, our, our little team, uh, we finished Final Four in state. You know, that's the farthest the boys' teams went, the one I helped coach last year. You know, so we've got some talent down there. And, and I want to keep the kids involved in that versus, you know, playing video games and yeah. wandering the streets or whatever else they do. You know? Are you going to be uh, utilize the fields on the other side of the street too for this tournament? Girls field, um, not a regulation field. I don't think so. I don't think they are. Um, so, you know, we'll be playing. Really, it's like for us, you know, it's, well, for all of us, I guess, it's four teams assuming everybody participates. So, you know, it's usually um, double elimination. I haven't received a schedule yet for Brian Cox. Uh, you know, as soon as I do, I told John Grantland I'd get it to him because he and I have already been talking about this. And really, just for me, more than anything, if you don't go down there, you're not aware. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I know you're down there, Rex, because your grandson plays. But you know, if you don't go, you don't know. And if unless somebody brings it up, you know, because I'm not pointing fingers at anyone, because I wasn't aware until I got involved. I mean, even even with the clay, you know, I go out there the best I can. I'm I'm picking rocks out of the clay. And, you know, I don't know where we get our clay from, but it's almost unfair. You can't get mad at your kid when he tries to field a grounder and it hits a rock and scoots past him, you know. So, hey. Yeah. <laughs>
Well, I'd, like, I'd like to see us do all we can to help them. Uh, if, if I need to mo make a motion for the portal apps, do I need to do that? Yeah, that one thing we need to be is once you get the schedule, let me know because normally what we do when there's a tournament, we probably need to go ahead and dedicate two guys, go ahead and find two guys that can work those, yeah. and that way they can prep the field for you. Right. And, yeah. and, and you know, too, I mean, this is what we do, you know, you're going to be playing multiple games. Right. So us coaches, um, I'll actually be the coach uh, for double A. I'm not sure about um, the other ones. I know uh, Shane, Mallon, and uh, Josh will be doing. I think Jeff, uh, Jeff Blair is going to be the uh, triple A. But, you know, us coaches and board members, too, you know, we're going to be down there. You know, we'll be helping rate fields, line, whatever we need to do. I mean, because that's, that's all part of it. But, you know, we have really, we have one um, tractor to drag the fields, and that's between three fields. I go down there and drag it all the time myself. But you guys prep it nice for us before the game, which I appreciate. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's a big help. But, you know, that's, this is going to be a different kind of different animal. And me being the president, you know, I want to do my best, put my best forward, foot forward to make sure that we do it right. And, um, you know, you know I got. Pro, make sure Waste Pro has extra dumpsters down there that they all want to keep uh, those little things that people sometimes forget about. The, the, the entry gate, that's something that too. A couple of years ago, we think about your layout. That way we can figure out where we want to put the fencing at so you can make sure you got your things out. Right. You know, we'll have to figure out too, you know, and, and this has got to be a team effort between all of us is, you know, where do we put the entrance? Where's, you know, people, where are they going to pay? Where they got to come in, you know, that kind of thing. And it needs to be, I guess, correlate with where's the most parking. I guess. I don't know. Or if you have two two entrances, I don't know. But, you don't have to have two. You know, one then, on 10th Street, one on 8th Street. Then someone's going to, you know, we'll have to man it, which, you know, the board will, will step up. The parents will step up. Yeah. Um, but really, for me tonight was just trying to make everyone aware, make sure we're all on the same page and whatever we need to do, we're going to do and just, you know, making sure that y'all are aware because it's not something that's going to be on your calendar. <laughs> you know what I mean? But that's all, that's all I have. Yes, sir. Very good. Uh, Thank you. I appreciate y'all. Right. Uh, I, I coached down there for seven years. I never had a kid play it. <laughs> <laughs> I just like to have children. That's what it takes, you know, and, and, and parents, we have to stay involved or yeah. what, what are our kids going to do? Yeah. The, you know, the do other side job. of it's not good. They'll do a good job. But thank y'all. Thank you. All right, Mark. Thank you. All right. All right. The next item we have is ICMA plan termination. What this is, back years ago, uh, former city manager of a plan put in place for a retirement plan. Uh, the only city manager that still had uh, money in the plan uh, removed it back in December. So now we're able to remove this plan and get rid of the fees and, and get it off the books for us. We have nobody else that's involved in it. So and one of the things they require was they said that took board approval because the board put this together years ago. Mm -hmm. So we need y'all's permission to terminate plan number 1910014, the ICMA retirement plan. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Ashbrook, second by Commissioner Mazzia. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. The next item we have in the reference is the flushing program. Uh, staff is gearing up to start flushing again. Uh, we, with one of the fires that we had out at the beach a couple weeks ago, we realized it's time for us to start flushing again. So our plan is to get the word out to everybody we can that on June the 5th, we're going to start flushing. We're going to try to do it system-wide as fast as we can. Uh, and try to could work our way out throughout the whole system. Where are we starting at? We're going to start in town. We're going to start in the beaches zone. We're going to end in Watson. We're going to start and branch out with as many bodies we put on at one time. Okay. Larry's got guys from his shop, guys from public work. We're going to try to get through as fast as we can. Sounds good. We're thinking that's a good enough window there to, before the uh, July 4th holiday. We don't have enough time to get it done before Memorial Day, so we want the system to settle down before the next holiday. Next item we have is a pedestrian bridge between 18th and 19th Street. Mayor Patterson, want to talk to you tonight about it? Yeah, I think most people that live here in Fort St. Joe know where this bridge is at, right between 18th and 19th. It's been used forever by grown-ups walking through there, kids going through there, 
and it got to where it was dilapidated. We had to tear it down. Well, I, I probably had four or five phone calls and maybe two emails from people wanting to know what can we do to get it back up. And when we do get it back up, can we make it a little wider so maybe a golf cart can go across it also instead of just pedestrian walking. So I wanted to bring it up tonight, get it on everybody's mind. Uh, this is something, you know, I'd say we've got plenty of citizens that use it all the time that want it back up. So I just felt like we need to do whatever we need to do to get it back up for them. Yeah, yeah I, th I think that's a good. I used it when I was a kid, um, and it stretches all the way. I mean, palm to the baseball fields mm -hmm. and schools. I mean, it's it's yeah, it keeps them off Long Avenue. I think it's fine. I just yeah. I'd like to know how much it will cost yeah. the city. And to two years ago, we have to budget it for next year. So. Two years ago, when when we voted to remove it, um, I had spoken with Jim Norton and possibly made it into a welding project for the for the high school kids. Uh, I don't know if we can engineer it, maybe provide the materials and, and let the let the kids make sharp crossing or something, make it purple and gold. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Yeah. So if we could just make contact with Jim again and maybe get a quote, maybe our engineer can donate plans to build a bridge. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> so we can just get staff, you know, looking at it and seeing what we need to do and what kind of costs we might be looking in. Okay, we'll start the process now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the only thing I had up there on new business was today there was news coming down from Tallahassee about the additional homestead exemption. So if you follow on there, the Senate bill, to my understanding today, that got passed would call for an additional $25,000 homestead exemption between the values of $100,000 and $125,000. Don't know what that value would actually be for the city, and and there's also talks that may not apply to rural communities. We don't know. It's something to be looking at. If they get additional information, it's something that just got moved forward today. Uh, also, another requirement I believe is that it's got to be passed by 60% of the voters. It has to be on the ballot next year. But it looks like it's moving forward. So I try to keep you informed. Yeah, that's going to be an issue for that person. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hate to speak too much of it before it yeah. does. Mayor, we did skip over the Avenue D and the Ordinance 531. I guess we can move on down. And we'll move on through. down if it comes in before we get through and we'll discuss it. Okay. Uh, public Works, John, you got a report for John? Uh, the big thing today was just working on the Commerce Park lot, just working on that. How about the uh, wheel station we had at the beaches? We got it going. He is trying to figure out the options, what we could do on that. The guy from Wheelow is out of town. So they've been trying to babysit that thing the last couple of days to try to figure out what our options are to see what we can do to get it put back in place. And our materials for the one out at the high school will be in shortly? Could, could be two to three weeks, I think, is what you're out, man. Okay. Well, we'll just keep, keep hoping everything holds up till we get the stuff to fix them with. <laughs> All right. Service water. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I really don't have anything for tonight, but I'll answer any questions you have. Uh, anyhow, we have any questions? I, I, I would like to just I talked to Larry before the meeting and I'm of course always interested in expenses and you, you know we uh, put lime treatment uh, uh, system in out there and, and one of the reasons clear up water number one and number two it might reduce our chemical costs and he said that we're saving a lot of money on chemicals because of that and it's one of the good things we've done so thanks to Northwest Water Management And thank you, Larry, for that also. Anybody have anything for Larry? No, I just want to say thank you uh, in response to what uh, Commissioner Bazette just said, and I want to apologize to everyone for running late. It's been a heck of a day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wastewater plant. Um, we got the, the well abandonment should finish up today, but it begins Friday. Uh, so I've, I've had a lot of calls. <laughs> Budgeted 20 grand for that. Yeah. We'll see what we get Friday. All right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and that's all. We're, we're spraying and you know, that sort of stuff. So, so we, still, we still have some, some algae, um, some control. I don't know if we'll ever completely get rid of it. All right. Did we get that other sonic disruptor back in? The sonic disruptor's in. It's working. Um, 
So you don't see anything standing out of your right hand side there. It's just ponds of good shape. Well, let me say as a Last night we had a little debate and I spoke to a lady from Highland View that lived close by there. She said it, it has made a world of difference over the last two years <laughs> since we bought those. So I appreciate yep. y'all keeping them going. Yep. Thanks for feedback. Yep. 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 That's all I got unless you guys have questions. Any other questions? For Kevin? Good. All right. And uh, I got the finance director put on this. <laughs> Page here and I won't see him no. <laughs> All right, we did him the first night he was on page. He didn't show up. <laughs> All right, that's okay. Mike can take care of things. City engineer. Yes, sir. Just a few things on the boat ramp. Um, so they've kind of started making some pretty decent progress over the last week or so, and um, they've worked on the stormwater pipes this week, and they're supposed to finish that. They're pretty close to finishing the stormwater work, and then they're going finish out the sheet pile wall. They should have both of that, both of those things done this week. Um, begin on the tieback system for that wall uh, later in the week and then the beginning of next week so they can get ready next week, start making preparations to pour that concrete cap on top of the wall. And, uh, that'll kind of finish out that side as we get closer to Memorial Day. And they still feel very comfortable they're gonna finish before Memorial Day, have both sides back open like we talked about. Um, and then also in the meantime, they're gonna continue to work on the timber dock. Uh, Possibly by the end of this week, they'll have the rest of the timber piles in on that north run, and maybe that would lead to next week being able to start the framing. So um, some progress is being made, and that's, that's all good and well. So all we'll right. continue to see how it goes. Clay, while you're up there, uh, this kind of coincides, and I want to go ahead and say it before the chief gets up here. We're fixing <coughs> to get into the busy season. I talked to the chief today. People are starting to maybe – Park in places they're not supposed to, and this and that. It's going to be a rough season. Chief, could you really just whether I mean, maybe just to educate the people when you're down there? I realize we may not be able to do a whole lot, but say, hey, listen, we're we're, we're working on half of a boat ramp right now. Can we uh, at least try to abide by what the signage says? And I know y'all try to do a good job, and it's hard to do, but. When you called earlier today yes, sir. about the red truck that was parked in the staging area, it's actually, there was two there when I got there, and they're both workers. Oh, so, wow. <laughs> um, I, and I, I understand there's not a lot of room for the construction company to park, but if we could... Well, no, that's something Clay can area, help us out with. with that they, I believe they could come in from the TDC building. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I believe they could come in from there and park right it's terrible timing right now for everything we're doing but we just got to make the best of it because for growth there's a little bit of pain involved and I appreciate you letting me know that because uh, Clay can probably take care of that okay. yeah. good good yeah. thank you that was, all the, that was all the updates I, I had, had something I was going to ask you about him Jones Homestead uh, sewer we're, uh, we're working on it yeah what are What's the timeline on those laterals being put in the ground? I've, the reason why I'm asking that is because I've got county projects that are people are wondering when they're going to possibly get sewer there. Um, a year? Can I get back months? with you? Some <laughs> of it, so we can get it designed and permitted, but the city's going to be putting it in. And so yeah. some of that i got to talk to John about because um, he's got the Long Avenue water line to do as right. well. And then some of the work, um, you know, possibly with the Northwest Water Management District money yeah. on, on that water line. So he's got some things. So the city's going to be putting those probably water. priority wise are ahead of that. Yeah. Um, the grant on that is like a two year grant or maybe two and a half so years I left on the grant. Long range is to try to get it done by the end of next year, by the end of okay. 2018. Well, that helps. So I just needed that's some. That's kind of the area where we're trying to do next fall. Is kind of what we're doing. And, and Clay, could y'all maybe. Just look at that pedestrian bridge on 18th and 19th, and just see if we you will. Don't have any kind of ideas. We can look at that, and there's also some folks out there that prefab those things and build them and ship them uh, and set them in place. And Eric, I have no idea. How listen, much they call, uh, we can get some yeah, I don't, I don't right know, there. but Eric Pitts, you know, is kind of in that type of business now. Why sure don't can. you reach out to Eric and yep. see? what he might could do that's i'm not saying eric i'm just saying though no, i know he's in that type of business industry. and right. he might be able to help us out on that i know he cares a lot for our community that's a good <coughs> I'll do that. all right anything else to play good 
No, thank you. Thank All you. right, this time we're going to back back up and pick up where we left <laughs> off at. I'm not going to go to the second page yet. Okay, uh, we're going to go back up to Old Business. Uh, Avenue D Sidewalk, Commissioner Thursby, want to talk to us about Yes, uh, finally, after a long time of working on the Avenue D Sidewalk, I'd be from Hodrick to Avenue D. Am I correct on that saying that, Jim? And, uh, yeah, and MLK. We're finally going to start on this. We're going to start on it in the next couple of weeks, is my understanding. Am I correct on that, Jim? And uh, I want to apologize to everybody for it not already being done, but uh, we got a lot of things on our plate right now. And we saved tons of money by not going out for bids and getting contractors to do this. This same job, is my understanding, would cost the city about 20 to 25 grand to have done through a contractor and we're going to be able to pull it off around $4,500 I believe was the number. Uh, that will start in the next couple of weeks and I just want everybody to know it is coming and I apologize for it taking so long but it's coming and uh, within the next couple of weeks. Now we talk about sidewalks. When are they coming for David Langston Drive? They're supposed to come in 2017. Do we know when? We're finally getting close in there. I believe it's actually that it's going to be next year. The SDOT, with, those, with that money, that safe route to schools, that is a five year plan. Mm -hmm. and normally, what you do is, I think we got approved in 2013, so by the time we forget about it, yeah. they'll come. So I think it's on schedule for 2018. Is that right, Mr. It's on my schedule. We're getting close. Okay. I do know it's coming next year. All right. Yes. Uh, just, just, just the one. The last house right there on the corner. talking about Underwood. Underwood. I pray that we can kind of speak to her before we put that sidewalk in and start anything. It might be a little confusing there if you don't talk to her first. Just, just, I'm just saying, I'm throwing up the warning, I'm making you feel like a man. Just good to let her know what we're doing. Well, no, what, what I'm saying, the sidewalk, uh, uh, the path, when it gets to her house, it, it, her house infringes upon the city property. All right. So, so it's, it's, and she's a little on the offensive side, you know. So, so mm -hmm. I'm just saying, please, please keep her. Talk to her. Yes. All right. Yes. We will. I guarantee. Sometimes we have wrinkles to work through, and we'll. Yeah. And I don't mean Miss Underwood's wrinkle, but let's try to talk to her to yeah, please, get yeah. that done because. Uh, I mean, I just worry about the safety of the people coming from the dollar store through there without any sidewalk. If we have to come out a little bit further or something, maybe we can do that to appease both sides. But she's not going to be against it because of the house sitting where it's been for so long. Right. And it just causes a little curvature right there. I understand that. Six hours apart. We'll work with Miss Underwood. Absolutely. And let her know that we will work with her on that, okay? All right, then we're going to go back up to ordinance number 531, Mr. Attorney. Yes, ma'am. Second thing I noticed is the density. 531 was dealing with the increase in the physical facility of the house. Would you call a public hearing? Uh, anyone in the public wish to discuss this? Now, this is the ordinance that's going to raise your utility uh, to 50 more dollars. Huh? No, let's let's clear that up. It's going to raise the deposit. Deposit, yeah, yeah, deposit. That's the word. That's the word I was looking for. For new customers. Uh, deposit new customers. is going up fifty dollars. For new customers. And um, and you got somebody from the public want to speak, maybe. Come on up. You know you got to do this. <laughs> Concern. Most of the new customers that will be trying to um, get water installed and all that will be the younger adults that make under $8 an hour or $8 an hour and under. And they cannot afford that. I mean, they're being critical unless you guys help them <laughs> with the deposit. Because, you know, it's just the young adults, they're the ones that, because us older 
and the ones with stable jobs, we already have that available to us. And like most of them, they don't want to speak up because they're not, you know, they're not impacted by it. Young, and they really young, don't care. <laughs> and so the ones that are, they don't come to the meetings. They don't even know what's going on until they go down there and try to apply. Right I'm with you, Miss Matthews. Yes. I know, so, uh, we had the uh, political forum yesterday. That was a question that was raised. Why are y'all going up? Uh, and again, my answer is, you know, our billing system is not what it should be. We need to have a workshop on our billing for our water people. Uh, because by the time they get the cutoff notice on the 20th, they're already into the third month of the water. Exactly. No, you, you might have raised that thing up to two, three hundred dollars. <laughs> In my opinion. <laughs> Because you're still going to lose money. Still going to lose. If you don't cut, tighten up, and start getting your fields paid sooner. Yes, sir, come on up. Jim Sickles. Uh, I was just wondering, does that affect, say, you move from one house to another and you go to hook up those I again? Would think so. Does Is that deposit follow? going to affect those people that move also? Yeah, you move. That have, that have been in good standing with them? that paid their bills and now they're going to drop a $150 charge on them? Great question. Uh, they would have to bring it up to, the answer would be if you move from one location to the other, let's say if I move across town, mm -hmm. uh, my deposit on my account is $100 now and it goes to 150 I would have to make the difference up of the $50 in there for the new deposit. Okay. So I would have a $50 charge. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Zickles. Jim Sickles. Uh, a, uh, I don't, it's not a significant change to the way it's written, but under A in the second sentence, uh, service shall make written application to the city auditor and clerk. I'd, I'd like that to read written application or online. If Mr. Attorney thinks that would be insignificant enough to keep us from having advertising. Century. But we don't offer. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Bazette, we don't we don't offer an option though for online, do we? Yeah. To turn it on? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We can do that. The only, <coughs> the only thing is right now, David, I understand is, and I'm and I'm trying to get it to the point where you can do it all online, even even do your signature with a credit card. But right now, you do it online and then you call them and give them the credit card number okay. on the telephone. There's got to be a problem, though, if you're not cutting people off until they're already in their third month of work. Mayor, I, I really see your point, uh, and, and I'm 100% with you, but Ms. Matthews talked about hurting young people. Well, I'm trying to get it where it's not hurting us, which is the majority of the people that are already on the system that we're going to have to make up the slack every time that we have, do you know that our past due now is over $200,000? And, and <laughs> what long Nobody ago? ain't managing that problem, right? Right, well. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say now. Our billing is not right. We need to change our billing. And we won't have $200,000 later. We get people cut off before they get three months um. down the road. And like I say, we'll have horseship cases and we'll have to do something. We got an elderly person, you know, can't make it by then. But I mean, people just Duke Energy when they cut you off, they cut you off. Right. Hey, <laughs> I mean, that's my fault. He said he could handle it with with one motion. What? Cut, make it thirty days instead of sixty. Jim, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Well, Commissioner Bazette says this is a two hundred thousand dollars that we're in debt. How far does this go back? It's as far back. As how far back is Munisco? I believe Munisco is back. I came in 2008. I think it was in place so probably eight years before that. So you figure it's 
years. Seventeen years, two hundred thousand um, dollars. It's not what it looks like at two hundred thousand dollars. For seventeen years later, we're two hundred thousand dollars in debt. Sometimes there's a cost of doing business, and I don't know of any business that don't take their the hard knocks. So it's being portrayed that we're two hundred thousand dollars in debt, but it took us seventeen years to get here, and a lot of things have changed in seventeen years. We went to a depression for several years so what it may look like a two hundred thousand dollar debt that we've accrued it didn't happen overnight and that's that's the only point i want to make the, the cost of doing business in any business though if they have a loss like that they make it up somewhere else and that's what i'm trying to say we have to make it up because we're responsible to the citizens so we have to make it up with with a higher fee somewhere on the people that pay the bills. Well, they so do. They pay the highest rates in the state of Florida almost. Well, that's right. It's going to have to be higher if we keep giving water away. I've been trying to harp on that for months. But And, and I, I'll make a motion right now. We change the cutoff date to uh, 30 days. So, I mean, if, if we do that, Commissioner Bizet, if we make that change, then I would not be for this. I'd be for that. I think that there's two ways to fix this problem. One is to cut them off quicker or raise the deposit. So we can scrap this right now and make a motion for 30 days. I'd go along with that. And then we have to bring it up later to raise the deposit. We can come back later and raise it. If everybody's in. Yeah, I, did, I think there's more than one solution. In other words, not be a motion to, to, for a second reading of Ordinance 531. Uh, Make a motion to to, uh, to increase our cutoff for city water or city utilities in a 30-day cycle instead of a 60-day cycle. Is that right, Mr. Manager? The easiest way to the easiest way to think about this thing is right now bills are due on the first, late out, late after the tenth, and cut off after the twentieth. The way the units are set up on there, we go and change that date, and there's a particular date in there you put in there for cutoff. You change it right now; it's set at 30 days. 30 days past the 20th that'll hit you. Which will, what we need to do is that's the position of the board is you just tell us to change it to one day, which will be the 21st. So if my bill's not paid on the 21st, I'll be on the cut list. And you'll be cut 30 days after that. No, sir, I'll be cut. I'll be cut that on the day 21st. That it's due. If my bill from the previous that's month was not paid by the 20th, that's a, that's a, I'll be cut off. Because you remember we're billing arrears, so okay, let's say that we're collecting, let's say we're in February. Well, we're collecting this for January's usage. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we rock and what we do is we send out a bill in February for January's usage. So it's not collected until March. So you can see the lag time by the time you get the bill out is, is where that comes into play with the timing. Well, if we take that 200000 if I did it right, divided by the number of months in the 17 years, I don't know if I did that right or not. I got $9,803. Would that be right? Per month? No. No? $900. $900. $1,000 a month. But bottom line but is we, we, we try not to lose any money here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. <laughs> Well, well, and I agree with I Commissioner Thursby that the system is better now than it used to be 17 years ago. Yeah, yeah. I think if we change the cutoff, it's more effective than doing this. raising the deposit. Because eventually, we won't have to give this money back. But it, you got to think of the drain on staff, too. If we start cutting people off the day after, yeah. if a check just sure. got missed in the mail, and it sends staff back and forth. I'm not going to vote for either one, so I'll just go ahead and put that out there because I'm here to help the citizens support St. Joe. They're paying astronomical water bills because St. Joe Company was going to put in all these houses out at Windmark that didn't happen. Now, the people at the heart of Port St. Joe, whether it be north, south, 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 whatever you want to call it, it's the people of Port St. Joe, no sides, that are sitting here eating crow because we took a crash in the market and the crash in the market made every individual out here in this crowd today pay high water bills the last i'm trying to bring water bills down i'm not trying to put any more any more burden on the people of our community larry has done a fantastic job of getting our water back in where it would 
Larry can't change the water pipes, but he's putting good water out. Eventually, we're going to get to where we came and where we're trying to get to. If it's not broke, don't fix it. In 17 years, it took that we know of. It was in place even before Muniz. It's not what it's being portrayed to be. I can promise you that. And that's all I got on that, and I'm going to hush. I, I really don't think that I just, this ordinance is not going to help the issue. I, 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 was some, I voted for it in the beginning, but once I'm, I think about it, it's, it's just not going to help the issue. I mean, I think I mean, it's bills, a sort of burden on people. Bills come out on the 1st, due on the 10th. Is that correct? Right. Can we just do it at the, the end of the month or the 1st of the next month? That way they're well, only 30 days change, in. You'd have to change your whole billing cycle on there. I would, what I would recommend is just setting that cut date on there. This past month we had the cut date fell on a Friday. We had 37 people is all we had on the cut list. Monday, we gave everybody a call because it's so small. We only had a cut list. 37 people out of how many, Jim? Over around 4,000 customers. Yeah, I mean, come on, guys. So this, there's no motion or anything on, on resolution or ordinance 531. Right, yeah. So I guess that, that, that's going to die. Absolutely. The mayor, I, I agree with you. We've had a utility workshop. I, I think your idea is, is valid. suggestion is to increase the cutoff date to the uh, 21st as the city manager has uh, recommended. Jim, did you recommend that or is that just what you've been asked because of what's the best case scenario in this situation? That's a board decision we made. Well, I know. So it really wasn't your recommendation is what I'm saying. No, you're right. It was. That was his okay. suggestion. Just so I'm clear, it's set no. for what? 30 days. So basically right now, no. you get on down to the 20th. On the 21st, what we do is rerun the cut list. That cut list looks back and it says 30 days. It says anybody that's passed due 30 days from that date on the 21st, it looks back 30 days, which equates to two month bills because it goes back to the last billing cycle dental who was on there. If you change it to one day, it'll go back just look to see who yesterday owed a bill out there. I, I, that's tough. I, I don't think that's fair. Either. I, I, personally, so let's. I, I, I'll get this for. Let's put it on the agenda for next meeting, if you don't mind, and let's uh, everybody think about it and uh, think what we can do for uh, uh, getting our uh, uh, folks to, you know, our delinquent list down. Let's put it that way. Okay. Yeah, have you talked to other, any of the other municipalities? How do they do theirs? Are they on the same wheel or they do it different? Every one is a little bit different. Um, Bay County used to, if you were one day late, you got cut. Used to, I'm not sure anymore what those were. You'll see some that's more lenient, some that are more strict. But, but the norm, the norm for utility billing is doing the first late after 10 is subject to cut off after the 20. Some will wait a little bit longer, some will cut you faster. Some will set it at dollar amount. You could even set it as you could say one day and you had to have a balance of fifty dollars. You'll see across the board there's different things because if you set it at one day and you don't put you leave the dollar amount at zero, if somebody underpaid their bill by ten dollars, you can cut them off. Yeah, and, and that's Basically, what I'm saying. This this type about. stuff that we may need to reworkshop yeah. this. I'm not against I mean, trying to help things. And, but let's be fair about it. Fifty dollars. There you go. Well, and Jim, I think it's a little ridiculous that we're keeping, you know, records 17 years old. At some point, every business uses the the transaction code write-off. When do we when do we decide we're not going to get it? We send it to collections. It's not going to happen. I asked Jim about that today, and because we send it off to the collection agency, mm -hmm. and ask him if we get an itemized statement back of of the ones they do collect. Right. And he said yes. And when they we get that amount, whatever the collection agency. He goes to that person, and that's wiped out. Is that correct? We 
whatever we get. So, so, so current, some of them are coming off, okay. but not all. We just try to be totally transparent. Sure. Yes, there are, you can write those off. Auditors can give us rules and regulations. Once you get past those audited financials, I'm sure we could get Mr. Vance to give us a memo that says, okay, you're eligible to write these that off the debt off. Can we find out what statute says about how long we have to carry the debt? At some point in time, we may get rid of it. Mm -hmm. All right, so what we're going to do right now, we're going to table this uh, second reading and consideration of adoption on the utility deposit, deposit for now. Sounds that way. Is that what everybody says? We'll just table it? Or um, well, I don't, or think, I don't think anybody's we're not doing this. I, I, don't, I think we just need to start over. Right. We didn't yeah. get a second uh, died. reading, so that's uh, okay. it died. So I'd like to put the, the uh, plan on the next uh, meeting, get everybody a chance to think about, call everybody, what other cities, whatever you want to do. Uh, I want to be fair to everybody, but you got to want our bills to be paid, too. And I definitely want to be fair to our citizens. You know, I don't want to put any extra burden on them, but that's our income. To me, if you use the water, it's not an extra burden on them. Other than, you know, our water is high and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. All right, now, let's get, is everything done, done with that? Any Page two. Yeah. Page two. Code enforcement. We're going to need back page, gentlemen. Stand on the internet. Stand on. Uh, one thing I have noticed, I haven't seen them, I'm going to ask you guys, the pickups. He used to send us all the pickups, too. Special pickups? Yeah, special pickups. Yeah. I haven't seen any lately in the last two weeks or more. He's sending us his activity mm -hmm. report. Some yeah. reason he stopped sending us we pick That happened about a month ago, I believe. It's been about that long. It's, it's been, been about a month ago. I've been waiting to see if it come back. And it did say today about uh, the ones that were basically cleaned up, I guess you could say, that he listed the ones that the prior month that he had. Yeah, well, we used to get pictures of them. Oh, okay. Yeah. We used to get pictures of them. All right, Chief. Thank you, sir. I don't have anything on the agenda. Uh, <coughs> you're up for a comment on the pedestrian bridge just from a public safety issue if you can make it happen I think any golf carts that we can encourage to use routes like that one other than our main thoroughfares like Long, Garrison and Monument it, it'll be a benefit to us in the long run so if you can make that happen I think it's it'll be a good thing I don't have anything else. That's no, I appreciate it, Matt, you. and I appreciate the feedback on that because it's a good idea. And, and, and Matt, and I don't know if I talk, told you this, but the people on the uh, circles with mm -hmm. the reduced speed limit signs and the children, it, you know, watch for children, all of these people are very happy, and I just want to thank you and John both for working on that so hard. And Jim. I thank you. Is that any for. other events coming up for the kids? Uh, just the one I spoke about at our meeting, right. previous meeting, June 24th. We've got our public safety day. Is. We've got so far 70 different agencies and folks committed to coming. I mean, the Red Cross is coming, Ronald McDonald House, all all kinds of safety folks. So, well, you're gonna keep us posted on if you need anything. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I talked to Mr. Jim this week. Um, Something we are going to need if we get the turnout we're expecting is porta potties. So we've talked to Mize and we're going to try to work that out, but we'll see how that goes. And I believe we can flip the bill for that. If you don't have it in your budget, we can figure out something on that, don't well, you, Jim? Yeah, my budget's tight, as y'all yeah. probably see. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, really, this is a good thing, and, and we'll help you out any way we can if we, if we all have to pool our money together without the. We'll help. I appreciate it. All right. Thank y'all. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. All right, Ms. City Clerk. Uh, there's an election schedule in your packet. If you have any questions, more of a timeline. I did check with the supervisor of elections about 4.30 today. There's been 198 early votes and 108 absentee votes as of about 4.30 today. Everything's on go for the election as far as our poll workers, everything that we need to be doing. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ms. Charlotte. Mm -hmm. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, citizens to be heard. Anyone in the audience wish to be heard tonight? Come on up. Just for clarification, PAC, Northwest Central Bank. 
last meeting we had on time, there was a uh, a statement made, and we just want, I just want to get some clarification as to what we need to look for for the contract that you have with the workforce. And the reason I'm bringing this up now is because I don't want to wait until June 30th and all of a sudden and we can't do this and we can't do this at the gym. Uh, and I'm saying that we had a little meeting and now at the meeting uh, on the phone, uh, the first question came up was, you, we, we'll be out of there at four o'clock. And now we're not starting our events until six o'clock that night. And we want to be able to be clear as to what we can use in that gym and what we cannot. Uh, like I said, our events are not gonna be very long. We promise to make sure that it's, it's cleaned up. Uh, but based upon uh, Ms. White's statement at that last meeting, uh, we, we need to be clear exactly what we can and cannot use. If she's not gonna al allow us to use 50 chairs, then we need to know in advance that that's all we're gonna be able to use, 50 chairs and six tables. That's what was last time. Why would they not let you use everything they got there in the storage? Well, it hasn't been clear, clarified in the past. That's the reason I wanna you know, get some clarification. I, mean, I don't know why they wouldn't do, if you do 50, why don't you do 75? <laughs> well, if yeah. they got them down there, I mean, if you need them. Yeah, I, I understand that, but it needs to be a clarification. It maybe. does. That so, way so there's no there's right. no arguments later. We know right up front. Yeah. Jim, is that something you can reach out to Miss White and find out exactly what we're, we can expect so that we can make other arrangements if we need be? Right. And that, that way I can, you know, right. go somewhere. We can do something some else chairs. if we need to, but well, we'll know right up front. Well, last time I had front. to go get uh, some chairs from the Centennial building and some tables, and it, it worked out very well for us but we had to go somewhere else, but there were extra tables and extra chairs that we were not allowed to use. Uh, and I'm saying this because of the fact that we're not trying to run an opposition program. We're trying to work with what's there. Uh, the argument for me sometimes is, you know, the gym is in this community and we, you're telling me we can't use certain things. Well, we understand that the city has a contract though with the workforce. We understand that very well. But for people who don't come to meetings, who don't get involved with things, all of a sudden the question mark, and I have to answer those questions as if I'm an official and I'm not. But I, I believe me, I, I have to deal with that. So one of the things, I just want to make sure that, you know, we don't have a, a problem at the last minute, uh, and we think this Juneteenth is going to be bigger and better than any before. And what uh, date is that on? This on? We're going to start on June the 30th at That's 6 p.m. That's a Friday night. And uh, we'll go, we'll, yeah, at 6 p.m. That's when we'll start. Uh, Ms. White says that they'll be finished by 4 p.m. Well, if they're finished, uh, you heard her make the statement, you know, that she didn't want to have no opposition. I didn't understand the statement at the time. I mean, <laughs> but, you know, it was stated, so we want to be clear. We'll get with her and make sure we get everything straightened out. All right, all right. Yep. Okay. Uh, the only other thing I wanted to ask, uh, uh, and I was going to ask uh, Mr. Anderson, that, how much is this for a sewer tank? Sewer tank? Yes, sir. Uh, generally, if you, if you have to have a grinder pump, the grinder pump is where half the expense comes into play. It's roughly $2,400 and I think the $40 or $50. Uh, the impact fee itself is a little over around $2,000 with a $400 pass. If you're in the, if you're in the county and, and don't have gravity, it's going to cost you a little over $5,000. It's about half that in town where you have gravity so you don't have to have that. The reason I'm posing that question because uh, I, I think I brought it up before, right there at the church on Avenue B. There was three separate houses that eventually were separated when Scott Washington uh, passed away and sold off. So the church bought the house closest to the church, where the other houses were separated, but the sewer system always ran over to that main house. And so I mentioned it to the person that was in charge of the house that we might have to take you off the sewer system, because when we had to clean out you know, the sewer system on our side, it backed all the way up. So some of the problems are caused by the other houses. And so we told them that they might have to get their own sewer line. And uh, that's gonna cause some issues. What we need to do, uh, that the, if you come see Mike McCoy, what we do is a sewer evaluation on there. That way we're gonna determine if there's gonna be a bore. We can figure out all the costs for it. We can make sure we do the best right now. Thank you very much. Easy to work on. Right. Thank you, Jess. Thank you, Jess. Anyone else from the audience? Any other citizen? Yes. I thought you already came up one time. <laughs> no, this is just for information. No problem. Um, the AA Anonymous 
I call it Mm -hmm. they're meeting in our building every Thursday evening at 6 o'clock. Yes, the Wake Bill. And also the Democratic Party will be meeting the first Monday of June. Yes. And they will be meeting in the Wake Building. Huh? Yes. Just for information only. Thank you so much, Ms. You. Letha. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. Anyone else? Anyone else? Mr. Lizette, we'll start with you. You don't have anything, buddy. Mr. Lyra. No, no it's not. Good you want me to go? Yeah. Uh, I just want to give a big thank you to our, our fire department. I know they had a, a lot of uh, issues this past week with a house fire and uh, they provided mutual aid to a big fire that burnt, I don't know, several, 20 or 30 acres, I think, out there in St. Joe Beach. Uh, just big thank you to their response and, and helping out. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. All right. I got some notes. Uh, it's probably going to take me 20 or 30 minutes to get all this together. I hate to do that to y'all, but uh, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, the only thing I got is I do want to thank everybody for getting out and voting, early voting this week. Just remember, uh, early voting is from uh, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. 9? 9 to 5. Okay, excuse me. I saw Miss uh, Charlotte give me that eye. 9 to 5, Monday through Friday. Saturday is it this Saturday, too. Same hours, 9 to 5. And then uh, the polls will be closed. Sunday and Monday and back open on Tuesday morning bright and early seven to seven, seven, to seven that day I encourage everybody to please get out and vote fire at the fire station uh, next to City Hall please come vote when you vote it's your voice and uh, I encourage everybody to uh, one more thing I do got guys if, it, if it's okay with everybody there's a lot of things going right now that kind of concern the city and the county I would like to call a joint meeting between the city and the county somewhere around the 15th or the 16th of this month Jim if you could possibly get a hold of Don and see if the hours and get talk to everybody and see if we can all get together on that somewhere around the 15th or 16th I'd like for us to all meet up together and just talk about what's on the table for this year and that's all I got and thank you and I apologize for being late today guys right. thank you. Uh, I only have one item I want to mention uh, Jim we can let's get Richie every minute he's got that he's not pushing to do something to be at the boat ramp I think we need his presence <coughs> down there now more than ever especially as we get into the hotter months and all we're going to need him down there just to make sure people are not fighting or whatever <laughs> all right, uh, that's all I have. I need a motion to adjourn. So, so moved. So moved.